Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. My name is uh, Ala Al Umari. I will be hosting uh, uh, this webinar. Uh, I'm a Saudi patient safety uh, uh, patient safety specialist at Saudi patient safety center. Uh, today's session will uh, last for 60 minutes. Uh, and before I started, uh, I would uh, like to go uh, over a few tabs. Uh, you will have the opportunity to ask our speaker uh, the questions at the end of this uh, session. Uh, you can use the uh, Q&A uh, panel uh, in your uh, a control pan, uh, write your question at any time. I will read them at the end of this uh, session. You will be here today from our presenter, Dr. Amani Bahdela. She will speak to us about LAZA prevention strategies. Uh, she is a senior clinical pharmacist who worked uh, in the field of um, pharmaceutical care services through many uh, managerial positions since 1996. Her practice uh, mainly was in a sterile IV admixture pharmacy, uh, in parental and nutrition clinic and management, and in uh, oncology, hematology, uh, chemotherapy uh, pharmacies. Uh, also, she worked as uh, a Sibahi surveyor for three years. Um, her master degree uh, specialized in uh, clinical pharmacy and her um, bachelor degree in uh, pharmacy science from King Saud University. Um, also, she has a leadership in healthcare management as an executive educational program from Harvard Medical School uh, in March uh, 2019. Uh, Dr. Amani is the director of health education and promotion department. Uh, for the past three years at King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz University Hospital. Um, we are honored to have her today to speak about LAZA prevention strategy, safety measurement in patient care. Uh, now moving along to our session, uh, please welcome uh, our speaker, Dr. Amani Bahdela. Thank you very much. Welcome everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Ala. It's my pleasure today to join uh, the patient safety, uh, Saudi Patient Safety Center. And I'll be more than happy to talk today in details about uh, the issues in uh, look-alike, sound-alike, preventive strategies, medication-wise. And uh, it's going to be a, a 60 minute session and I think we're going to keep a 15 minutes for the discussion and questions and answers at the end of the session. So uh, our outline today is going to be about the quality standards that's uh, going to um, uh, going to summarize what's the importance of uh, following the measures of quality and regulations. We're going to talk about the issues behind the look-alike, sound-alike mistakes and medication errors from staff, staffing responsibilities and the criteria of patient care as an inpatient staff mainly, plus the outpatient, continuity of practice, the good practice versus malpractice, in double checking, in doing the right thing in the right time, applying the patient's right which is five rights to get, together with the medication management, 10 rights with the patient. And also the importance of communication between the team members, importance of discipline of the staff and the manpower, risk management in patient care, and how to do the proper reporting and document documentation, which going to affect the patient care dramatically to increase the quality standards and to increase whatever needs to be improved. So our issue is to talk about the joint commission standards, the international commission standards, that it's really an, uh, a big chapter that has the medication management. The chapter has almost uh, eight points that it's really one of the master points, most of them are the master points that we are following in detail to correct all the issues behind the patient care. 
and we will talk about most of them. Also, we have the organization management standards. So, total of 14 points of quality standards that we manage to follow to do the proper patient care in hospital manners, in, in healthcare sector. The international patient safety goal is point number one that always we consider as the most important uh, reference to follow. Access to care and continuity of care, patient and family rights, all those chapters are followed in detail. They have their policies, guidelines, uh, internal and external standards. Assessment of patients, care of patients, anesthesia and surgical uh, care, medication management and use, patient and family education chapter. Also, we have the organization management standards that has another six points, which conclude the quality improvement and patient safety, prevention and control of infection control, governor's leadership and direction, facility management and safety, staff qualification and education, management of information. So we, I, we already identify the goals that we always follow in quality to assure that we are following the standards that it's right to be applied to do the proper patient care. So we will talk the history about the medication starting from the procurement entering the hospital, then storage of medication, which is very important issue that we really consider as number one in medication management because the storage means stability, means effectiveness of medication, means good effect and therapeutic effect on patients. So starting from storing, we will be able to order as a pharmacy continuously our medication supply. And then when it enters the pharmacy, we will be able to, after uh, ordering, we, that we will do the transcribing means and to work on it as uh, effective preparation and standards of labeling, reserving in the pharmacy, doing kind of distribution of the medication, whether oral, whether IV, whether uh, uh, in, um, oral IV injections, and we can distribute also the high alert to be separated from the regular medication. The importance in this storage inside the pharmacy and outside the pharmacy is to be uh, uh, comfortable during the busy time to pick up the right medication from the right location within the right time. And this is the issue behind the look-alike, sound-alike uh, 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 master uh, topic, because we need always to be very careful whenever we receive from the store all the medication it has to be and has to be distributed on the shelves by a way to avoid mixing up between products as they are look alike or the products that it sound alike. So distributing the medication inside our pharmacy is a very crucial thing that's supposed to be followed starting from the micro management until the higher management due to a possibility of mixing up specifically in medication that has a high alert efficacy. And in this uh, situation, we always consider hazardous medication also as a part of high alert. But the word hazardous is not applied on high alert medication. It's applied only for a, a very a limited quantity of medication like chemotherapy, which are uh, hazards and chemical. But other Right. Other than that, most of the medication that has a narrow therapeutic index between the administ uh, between the effective uh, therapeutic effects and the toxic effects, 
it has a very uh, limited um, um, uh, limited relation. So we have to always consider the high alert to be very important to be in a designated area with a good double checking system and even the look-alike, sound-alike high alert like dopamine and dopamine, they are very uh, well known that we always uh, consider them a very risky medication because they sound alike, they look alike, and we always have to distribute them in a part. So every single item uh, from dopamine has to be away from the dopamine. So after that, after picking up the medication from the shelf, the, the important is to do the proper preparation and after doing double checking after the preparation and the independent double checking on the high alert, we should consider dispensing those medications by the right patient name, right patient drugs, and apply the five rights of each prescription. And then it's going to be for the administration, within nursing, and documentation is very important in the medication administration chart, then monitoring and then procurement again. So this cycle is one of the most important cycles that we always consider that if we apply it well with the proper quality standards, we would close, close the loop of patient safety. That's why we need to assure patient safety by maintaining the quality measures in patient care. So the word quality by itself is seem like a difficult concept to measure. But uh, in, in that word, we have a meaning of doing the five rights that's related to medication management. So if we consider those five rights to be the most important rights available, so what we do is we are saving almost 70% of the issue behind medication errors that could happen without applying the proper patient rights in medication management chapter. Those five rights is the right thing, which is the right time, the right dose, the right medication, and the right frequency, the right route. So what we usually do, we have to always apply those safety standards after doing kind of verification of the order doing kind of transcribing the order, doing the right preparation, right labeling, which is going to affect dramatically the use of those medications while the nurses write, read the label in the right way because we do have a criteria of a legal order label. The label shows that those orders are trans verified calculated, transcribed well with a good label and dispensed to the nursing so they will just take over and do their, their, their job by double checking on those medications and then it will be dispensed uh, uh, to the patient and administered well. So the medication safety, really it shows a high commitment of a pharmacist and the standards of safety are really important our medication used in hospitals, we have to always prevent the error and patient harm. So specifically in the inpatient sector, inpatient pharmacy sector, this, is uh, this uh, uh, department has a lot of issues to be followed, a lot of standards to be followed, a lot of... Uh, um, a very crucial things to be followed to do a proper medication management because in the outpatient sector we have a standard of oral medication that has a barrier in the stomach before reaching the blood usually we consider the inpatient sector is the most crucial area to follow and has the most important data and standards of quality to follow towards patient safety because most of them are injections, high alerts, and a lot of 
uh, crash card item, which is life-saving medication. So that's why whenever we consider the inpatient, we consider usually an opportunity to reduce the harm if things is going on the right track. How we are going to do the proper management by reducing the medication errors specifically in Laza, as an example, and other uh, issues behind the medication errors. We're going to talk about things that we can apply um, uh, in the pharmacy sector, all in all, that really can improve the, uh, the system to reduce the medication error. The things that I really uh, read about it and I summarize it, it was about automation because human errors is really uh, sometimes uh, affecting the patient dramatically and it has an effect on the patient's health. And we do have uh, uh, some studies that shows that almost every year there is 5% uh, of uh, uh, patients, hospitalized patients, they are admitted and they're losing almost, uh, almost uh, a, 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 a 5,000 their prescription every year, which is almost millions of dollars uh, every year. So what, we are, what we're doing now is we're suggesting usually as per the international standards to have an automation in every uh, tertiary and secondary hospital that could really reduce the risk of errors and medication errors. And also technically, we should have a proper on-job uh, on -job training for all the staff who's going to join our uh, pharmacy from assistant pharmacists and regular pharmacists, clinical pharmacists, pharmacy managers, and seniors. So what we do uh, is to suggest to have a robotic barcode medication dispensing technology, which is uh, almost applied in most of the Saudi Kingdom uh, hospitals. And uh, this barcoding uh, starting from the procurement, the store itself uh, do their own job by barcoding the medication before applying them on the shelves. Also, the, before dispensing the medication, they're doing a good job by barcode, doing a scanning of the barcode chart and uh, just check what is the medication and what is the number of it and, and what is the patient's name and whether it's applied in the system or not. And then after that can be dispensed to the patient. Then we can have a, a, a pilpic machine or a, a, a machine that has uh, drawers that can be uh, uh, already, those drawers are systematically arranged together with the software. Why? Because having a software to dispense the medication will reduce the error of picking up the wrong medication from the wrong place. And specifically, those machines like Pixis, like Pilpic, they are available in the world itself. So they are like a cabinet that has a software and it's used to restock the pharmacy items in a row. And it's, it's mainly automated if the, or the order is entered in the software, it's already giving us the medication room that has this medication item that was ordered in the software. So it has really a beauty of reducing the, the error of picking up the medication from the wrong shelf by the wrong way. Implementing the barcode even can be extended to the bedside of the patient. So it's not only to understand what's going on and understand uh, uh, what is the medication name uh, on the shelf and to know what is the number of the tablet inside and what's the generic name of the medication. We can scan the patient's uh, uh, bracelet that has the name of the medication, uh, the name of the patient and his location and his uh, name in three names. And we will know exactly this is the medication, this is the patient that has this kind of medication with this drug in generic, with this dose, with this frequency, with this route. So it will be a system
systematic way to identify the patient and identify the medication that was uh, uh, dispensed and uh, prescribed for him. After barcoding, it would give real uh, a, a feeling of uh, comfort for the healthcare provider. So he will know that he's really going with the right uh, indication of use from the physician side till the uh, administration from and the, the, the pharmacy side till the administration uh, of the medication. Also from the automated parts, we can have the intravenous infusion pumps that really helps a lot to reduce the errors of the rate of infusion. So if there is any drug that can be given to the patient with the right infusion pump within the right infusion rate and the right infusion duration, that can help really in reducing any mistake that could happen specifically in the high alert medication. So we can really imagine how many medication error can be reduced whenever we use those uh, uh, automated machines to do proper medication management. As a whole, inside the inpatient pharmacy, we do have, for the people who don't know, we do have many hospitals in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia that has a unit dose drug distribution system which is automated medication storage system. And it's connected with a computerized physician order entry system, which is an HIS system, health information system technology that connects the computerized physician order entry system that can be entered inside the system and it will connect automatically to a storage of a medication in drawers that can pick up all the medication needed for each patient's prescription and it will be labeled and also the patient has a barcode on each label with the patient's name, patient's location, medication name, frequency, and the amount of drugs that has happened and the route of each medication administration. The beauty of this, we're not doing a commercial for those things. What we're doing now is we're trying to minimize medication error that could harm the patient. And to increase the safety, we do have a manual way and we have an automated way. Manual way was already discussed and already been presented many times about the uh, double checking, about the importance of an available medication safety officer available inside each pharmacy to collect all the errors and try to increase and dig in the problems behind each error by a root cause analysis quality standard. And then we will, uh, those medication safety officers, they collect all the most frequent medication error that's happening every single day or every single week. And they will start to dig about what's going on behind those errors. So reporting of those errors in the manual system is really important because human errors are really increasing from a place to another among the whole king, the whole world. So that's why the beauty of the automation, if possible, is really uh, a, a thing that's reducing dramatically the human errors all over the world. So we do have an example of one of the unit dose uh, cabinets that has uh, uh, many uh, chambers in here, and it works, this is the, uh, the result. It's a barcoded label that has all the, the patient data. In the back of this label, you will find the plastic transparent bag that has the medication. It's good for oral medication and it's for the unit dose system. The CPOE has uh, usually an order entry computerized physician order entry, it really overcomes the prescribing error. It has uh, a minimize of the handwriting, computerized decision uh, support. So it lists uh, most of the possible drug interaction. As you can see in the slide, the patient age categories, because we do have 
uh, population, neonates versus pediatric versus adult, and uh, geriatric. Pregnant ladies also has a category. So the CPOE usually, if the, the data bank that that's really customized well to cover all of those age categories, it would be a very good opportunity to give the medication management on the proper way with the five rights and avoiding medication error and increasing the medication safety. So there is no possibility of handwriting. There is no possibility of misreading. There is no possibility of drug interaction. There is no possibility of increasing doses dramatically because everything is computerized and customized well. So the beauty even of the CPOE is that it has an integration opportunity with the medication uh, management uh, systems like uh, chemotherapy preparation and uh, calculation system. It has uh, the ability to merge with the PILPIC. It has the ability to merge with automated compounder machine for parental nutrition. It has an ability to uh, merge with the inventory stock management uh, uh, system. So the beauty of the CPOE that doesn't work alone is can merge with barcoding system and other system that can really reduce the risk of any medication error that can harm the patient and increase the patient's safety. So it has a beautiful benefit. And the way it works, it works with order communication because if we, uh, of the physician orders uh, has uh, if the physician order a prescription for the patient, the pharmacist can do easy verification because if it's installed well and the system has already its own criteria of doing proper verification to avoid and overcome over the lab. For example, if the patient is a nephrology patient and the curiosity clearance is really high, and the patient has a prescription of vancomycin. So the prescription usually, uh, there is a seek and drop. This can be done by the clinical pharmacist in the world. But if it's installed in the system, not to exceed a certain limit, if the laboratory is attached with the CPOE uh, entry system, the prescription, it will not allow a, uh, a dose that can harm the patient's nephrology system and it can give a good dose that it can be adjusted to the curiosity clearance of the patient. For that, the beauty of that system that it can be customized well to avoid patient harm and to give the patient the right dose within his um, um, proper organ uh, um, um, performance. And then for trans, uh, dispensing those items after uh, preparation, then to be delivered through the pneumatic tube, which an automation, uh, automated uh, drug delivery system that can buy a uh, vacuum. It can be through tubing inside the hospital uh, uh, HVAC system. It can reach the patient ward by a certain uh, code of each ward and then to be administered by uh, barcoding from the nursing side. So uh, to be honest, one of the most uh, uh, advanced technology is this uh, um, pathway of a medication. And we have really uh, an issue after applying the CPOE and the automation, and I read about it, that it has phases. Starting applying the technology, it has phase one that people will be excited and to launch it, and there is the peak and trust following it. So this is phase one and phase two will be that the peak will uh, be, it's not as bad as it looks in. So the peak will be good, but uh, it, the, the applying of it will be a, little, a, bit, a bit slower. Phase three, uh, the trough of disappointment, if there is no merge, if there is any uh, obstacles that can face the system, 
Uh, so the management, usually they have four uh, categories. Uh, let's keep working on it, or let's refine it, or let's improve the technology, or let's do research to demonstrate its value. So having this peak of excitement and then starting to do having this trust of uh, disillusionment, and then after that, after the management help, it will have a plateau of productivity. This is normal for each technology application. So people, they might see that there is some frustration that could happen in the beginning. If there is some materials, some uh, issues in bugs in the system, integration problem, uh, if they do have the IT issues, uh, manpower, uh, because IT uh, personnel, they should supposed to be available all the time, and they're supposed to be a team inside the pharmacy as an IT team to follow whatever obstacles that could happen, and then everything going to be fine with the teamwork. But if uh, some of those uh, important uh, population or important staff who's not there or important elements who's not following properly or important uh, uh, this uh, arrangements with integration, it will cause really a frustration. So this is normal. In every hospital that I work in as a tertiary hospital, we do have a three years of ups and downs until we apply the automation properly. But people, they should be, uh, uh, um, they, they should have the motivation uh, to do this kind of uh, uh, applying of technology. So reporting uh, in inside the pharmacy and inside the hospital as a whole, in specifically the medication management reporting is very important for the patient safety. It has a key of success to do kind of increasing the patient safety. So the medication errors specifically in reporting, specifically if the medication error has an issue with the, after doing the, the root cause analysis, it has an issue with the problem with the patient himself or with the staffing or with the system, we would do a kind of improvement by doing task forces and committees that can be initiated to do kind of correction of whatever we have from uh, obstacles that can find a solution that we can find a solution to overcome those obstacles. So as I mentioned just a while ago, that uh, on the international level, for example, estimated that 19% of medication administered in U.S. hospitals are administered in error. And approximately 2% of patients admitted to U.S. hospital experience a harmful medication error. And also, there is a study by Koshal Bates and Landergan et al. in 2001 that among uh, the medication errors, among the leading causes of prevent preventable errors with a reported inpatient incidence of 5.7%. Bates reports that medication error costs approximately $5,000 per event, as I mentioned earlier, with a projected annual cost of 2.8 million dollars for a 700 bed hospital. The numerous reasons for unsafe medication practice is usually about many, many issues. I selected the most important three reasons from the literature about the problems of unsafe medication practice. If you can three of them, you might see it easy and can be avoidable. But to be honest, there really needs a hard work to overcome those three reasons. What, the first thing is the poor access to information. And this is about the system itself. The, the second thing is the poor communication. And I will talk a little bit of, about communication because it's a worldwide problem among the healthcare providers and other companies and other sectors. Inadequate and knowledge of experience. And this is really like, uh, an issue of discussion in every single day about the on-job training, 
lacking of good supervision, doing competency checklists for each staff, and doing proper management, double checking, and things that is related to quality standards and personal standards. So the risk of medication administration and benefits of double checking really is a problem that is really appearing every single day. The medication administration by nursing, it has a risk management and an area of concern in healthcare. So whenever we have a medication, we should apply the five patient right. But whenever the medication is available in the world, we have another five rights to be applied. So the total of patient rights are 10 rights to be applied, but five of them related mainly to medication management. So after applying the patient rights, we should have documentation in the automated medication administration record, which is the MAR, that's through the physician order. So in that issue, we found that worldwide, most medication errors has occurred during the administration stage. So that's why whenever we usually do, we train nurses as quality and as pharmacy to do proper reading, proper calculation, proper doing, proper labeling, proper uh, double checking, independent double checking on all the medication. So sometimes automation can fix this problem because there is individual varieties. Some of the nursing, they do, have, they do have the skills and the care, and some of the nursing, they, don't, they do need a more training to, go to do that. So due to those individual changes, we, will, we sometimes uh, uh, manage to do kind of barcoding, just to, uh, to do kind of minimize the issues behind those mistakes that could happen, which is, we could call them mistakes, in just public, but professionally, we call them medication errors. So the types of errors that we do have, uh, mostly administration, preparation, transcribing, and prescribing. So if those errors happening from time to time, we should always collect the data to know what's going on and what's the issue behind. But we should discuss a little bit about the medication uh, error, the factors affecting medication action and medication errors that could happen. So from the prescribing point of view, if we talk about various factors that can affect the prescription, the aging and the pregnancy, uh, not the aging, I didn't mean aging, I mean the age group. So if we have an infant, it's a different thing than the adolescent, than the old age. And the pregnant lady has their own development factors. So we always have to consider that these uh, uh, criteria to be applied, that it's really affecting the prescription dramatically and how to be prescribed. So in adolescents, the allergic reaction that may occur, it occurs because sometimes we prescribe them uh, prescribed for them a medication that is given uh, for adults. And then the allergic reaction can be developed because lacking of uh, allergy information. In a geriatric, they have different response to medication due to their age and organ performance. So these are really important due to uh, the issues behind the prescribing, even, even the gender difference. The gender, uh, usually between male and a female, there is a, a, a different distribution in body fat, blood components, because of the veins and the size of the veins, body surface area, fluid compartments, hormonal differences between the patients. Even the time of administration of the medication between the time of uh, the last dose and given the second dose, after the prescription is applied well, sometimes between pharmacy time and nursing time, there is a difference in timing of administration. So that makes a difference in the antibiotic effect. And if it's not given 
as soon as the same timing and hours of the of the high, the high plateau of the medication level, it will make the patient uh, develop a bacteria a bacterial resistance. Why? Because sometimes the level of the antibiotic goes down and the effect of the antibiotic will be less if we give a second dose not in the right time. So that causes a harm to the patient if the administration is not there. And to be honest, the environment even can affect the patient from uh, the prescription itself. And it's sometimes uh, if the patient has a very high temperature environment, those patients, they do have really a problem in nervousness. Sometimes they, they need a little bit of uh, controlling their blood pressure. So having this environment changes is different from a country to another that affects the patient action. And the, the, also the sedative and the anti-anxiety medication is affected. Psychological factor that can affect the patient medication really affects the prescription and the use of the medication. Sometimes the patient, they uh, avoid using the medication and the doctors keep prescribing those medications for the patient and they have no control of their action. So it's not considered medication error in that case, but it's considered a variety that affecting the prescribing of the medication. Also, the disease itself and the illness that might be hidden by the, the patient without uh, informing. And if there is a kidney or liver or a heart dysfunction, we should consider prescribing the right medication for the right patient, and we should consider the lab results just to avoid toxicity for the patient. So the drug order has a side effect, an adverse effect, and this is mainly depends on the prescription itself and the medication counseling that could affect the patient dramatically to avoid any problem that could happen to the patient, direction of use of the patient, special storage requirement, common drug-drug interaction, common drug-food interaction, and the side effect that can help the patient to know and to avoid and trying to make the action of the therapeutic effects of the medication. Whenever the patient comes to the pharmacy, we are trying to minimize the patient to have a problem with the adherence of the medication, specifically in the program of medication counseling to reduce the medication error in using and to reduce the prescription problem. So we usually do kind of a, a chart for the patient who has a four medication and above, especially the complicated cases. And we write, I'm sorry, the, the chart is in Arabic. We write all the medication here in the right side, okay? And then we write uh, the medication used in here. Sometimes we put auxiliary labels. AM, we will put a sun. PM, we will put, put a moon. And sometimes the calcium that has to be drink with a lot of water, we have a lot of uh, glasses of water beside it and et cetera. And then we have here some drug food interaction that's supposed to be avoided. If it's written in Arabic and people cannot read, we, will, we usually write it in English if the people are uh, English language speaking. So the patient rights usually are uh, one of the most important to avoid prescribing and administering and preparation problem. The right patient for uh, the right medication for the right time, with the right dose, with the right route, right information on the drug to patient for to patient education, right to refuse medication, right assessment of the patient, right documentation on each order and each reporting medication administration record, right evaluation of the medication itself. So I, I will just end up by the importance of communication so I can keep some time for the discussion. We have a communication issue that it will be very informative information to the patient to be given. So when we, when we want to, as a healthcare provider, wants to give information to the patient, have to be very careful with the information to be given, should be informative, should be up to the point. We should be very focused 
and the physician have to give some time to each patient within the right time that he can give in the clinic and not to keep it for uh, without information. And the pharmacy should give the full information about the medication and the drug interaction, drug food interaction, and the timing and the importance of timing and write the schedule of the patient counseling if the medication is above four items. The nonverbal communication is also important. We have to include maintaining the eye contact with the patient if we are giving counseling inside the clinic and inside the pharmacy, using the active listening skills and using the appropriate gesture with the patient and helping the patient to always do the communication. In the literature, it supports direct communication with the child. So even the pediatric population, they have their own communication to do their kind of patient care and do a proper thing that really increases the patient adherence to administration and uh, taking their medication. So usually we have to listen and do proper listening and be able to get, take a good history and not to judge the patient and be confident and calm whenever the patient has a problem and difficult to communicate with us. We should avoid obstruction in communication, taking a good way in managing and avoid poor response to usual methods. So there is a multiple patient type. We should usually understand their way in uh, doing the communication. Some people, patients are manipulative. Some, people are, uh, some patients are controlling. Some pa uh, patients are seductive. And some patients are unrealistic expectation of care. They want to draw attention, raises new problems as uh, the visit ends, and some resistance to physician recommendation and self-destructive. So the patient usually uh, has uh, many types of personality. We have many types of patient personality, and that depends on the healthcare provider, how to really manage whatever they can do to help the patient and to understand their situation. So by this slide, we, I want to conclude the whole thing behind today's lecture. We do uh, really discuss the issue behind the, the safety measure that that should be considered inside preparing the medication as uh, look-alike, sound-alike strategies that can be applied and how to apply them properly in the patient care and uh, inside the pharmacy and within uh, the medication management chapter under the Joint Commission chapter by standards of quality. And we took it over even from the patient point of view and the prescription point of view, and we discussed the patient rights that really matters in each prescription and the way to do kind of automation to avoid patient problems and to decrease the uh, harm on the patient and increase the patient safety. And thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to do this kind of uh, share and care. Thank you, and uh, wish to hear from you any questions that needed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Amani, for addressing this interesting topic. Um, so now, dear participant, uh, we will answer the question. Kindly, if you have any question, you will have uh, the time to uh, write it in the Q&A panel. Uh, so, Dr. Amani, our first question. Um, does uh, the uh, staff uh, measures or the safety measures uh, include patient uh, education also? Surely, yes, because I already uh, uh, informed that really the patient counseling, which is a part of the patient education, it has a major role in using and adhering to the medication itself. So if the patient use the medication well, it will lead to good uh, management and decrease the possibility of patient uh, readmission to the hospital and increasing the patient's lifestyle. So to be honest, uh, we do have a program of patient counseling and we did a statistic about the results of patient counseling, about their uh, uh, the way of coming back to the hospital and the timing that they come back from the last visit until they come back within three months. And we had really um, a dramatic 
uh, improvement in their uh, uh, visits to the hospital.